Now check this out, guy. This is one thing I learned when I was taking math class. And when I was doing, um, was I? No, when I was teaching math and I was doing a fair bit of stock trading and stuff like this, um, 24 years ago, 25 years ago, right? And one of the things companies like to do, right? One of the things companies like to do, let's say um, profit. Let's put profit here. You know, well, do you want to put profit? You put time here anyway. Time. Time is usually on the x-axis. Okay. And um, let's put money here. We'll just put money. We're not going to call it profit revenue yet right so what you do with a company in general if you're making something if you're delivering something maybe a product or a service or whatever it is time the fourth dimension time the fourth dimension controls it right if you have if you're doing any type of company the purpose of the company in general is to generate revenue profits right so if you're making something, you're a service company or whatever, you have a certain set fixed fixed cost base. And then as you make products, your expenses go up, or if you hire more people, your expenses go up, right? So let's call this expenses, the expense chart. Maybe it's like this. The odds are it tapers down, goes like this, right? Because if you're making products if you make bulk costs you less right so let's call this expense expenses now your revenue if you're a company let's see if we've got a different color pen um, let's bring out this guy. let's do let's do blue i do have blue there too but let's bring out a fresh blue let me see if these ones are any good. That's not bad. Let's use this one. Now, once you become a company, you start selling your product. The odds are you probably don't sell your product right off the bat, starting at zero date that you started your company, right? So after a certain time, you start generating revenue, right? The odds are it goes like this, it goes like this, you get an order, it goes like this, goes like this, goes like this. Hopefully it goes like this. And this is revenue. Revenue. Right? Now, the way it works is the difference between your expenses and your revenue is your profit. Right? So profit. Profit is equal to r of x or r of t let's say r of t minus expenses let's call it e of t right so expenses we're going to say e of t and that's your function and your profit or your revenue is r of t usually it's just r of x right and the difference here is your profit let's call this let's put this in green so this would be your profit profit right and this is really what you want you want to see your profits increase the gap here increase and there's two ways you could do this you could generate more revenue or reduce your expenses right generating more revenue is marketing better product buying out mergers and acquisitions buying out your competitors uh what do you call it sabotage <laughs> espionage uh, whatever you end up doing right so mr rainfreeze have you Chicho, have you seen Terrence, oh, I knew this was going to come up. I'll, I'll talk about it. The Terrence Howard's uh, theories. Okay, we'll talk about it. Um, so that's one way, you know, the way you can visualize it, right? Now, one of the things that I, I learned is 
that comes up a fair bit because I follow stock market trading and stuff like this. Um, in general, a lot of companies, they have this general revenue going up right if they take over more areas it's expanding and whatnot it's the expenses that are the killer really because you got to keep your expense get a keep a handle on your expenses and what happens if you're working in a company and i'll give you one example that it stuck with me it was regarding american airlines right this is back in the day i haven't flown on a plane for over 20 years now i just decided I'm done traveling. I'm staying where I am because I used to fly around on planes a lot, right? Doing geophysics and just traveling in the states and stuff like this. And what I ended up doing, apologies if I'm not reading the chat, gang. What was to see this? I've seen those. Uh, I like his new table. Uh, yeah, I, I, I gotta address that. Um, this stuck with me when it when it hit my radar. Was somebody in American Airlines? I don't even know if American Airlines is still around. American Air, Airlines, Airlines, let's say, Air, all right? Back in the 80s, 90s, when you used to fly around, in the early 2000s, I believe, they used to give you food service, right? Like if you bought a ticket, you know, if you traveled long distance, you got, you know, breakfast, dinner, lunch, or whatever. If you travel short distance, you usually got a little sandwich, like a croissant sandwich with little little things on the sides and stuff like this, right? And then sometimes free drinks and stuff. Alaska Airlines was really good for that. They give you good meals for plain food, right? But one time I saw where American Airlines, um, they were trying to cut expenses, reduce expenses, because airline industry is just a, in, in terms of, investing is just a scam they're 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 rarely profitable right they're ra rarely profitable and when they are it's usually just a small blip right and they're using a lot of tax revenue tax write-off and stuff like this and they do their thing right but this thing hit my radar where one jewel below in american airlines looked at the meals that american airlines was providing right this would have been whatever they got different compartments for different things they're providing and what they did they reduced the cost of these meals by like five cents right five cents and the amount of money that this one person ended up saving american airlines right over a year period was in the order of like $10 million or $12 million, right? Because they were serving so many meals, right? So let's say $10 million, let's not go 12. Let's go $10 million, right? Saved per year, per year. And American Airlines at the time went, oh, they got good people working there, good management, and the stock did a little jump up, right? I can't remember when this was. It was like 20 plus years ago, right? 20 plus years ago. Okay. Now, right now, the way a lot of companies are saving money is by keeping the packaging of the item the same, but reducing the amount of material in the packaging. That's one thing I've seen where let's say you have a box, right? Of something that you're buying. Okay. Where it used to be 50 grams of something you bought, right? But now the same box, the size is the same, but inside the box is 40 grams. Take a look at, take a look at this. Okay. You might notice that this is something that's happening with stuff you've been buying you yeah sure sh shrinkflation shrinkflation right thanks see death okay shrinkflation right so the box stays the same but the material reduces it's deceptive it's deceptive or another thing that's been going on if you've been buying a certain product 
it's easy for me to draw boxes. So I draw boxes, right? Certain products, the ingredients change. Ingredients change. Change. Now, why did the ingredients change? There are multiple reasons it could happen. One of them, they found a better supplier, right? Cheaper supplier, so they get it from a new place. They buy from another country where uh, labor is less expensive, or they are forced to find a new supplier because the supply chain has been cut. The supply chain is broken, right? And this is something you would have noticed in the last four years. And I've seen the flavor of certain things that we were buying. The flavors changed because the ingredients has changed. Okay, they're getting cheaper and cheaper products, or replacing some old uh, some ingredients they had with new ingredients because they can't get old those older ingredients. Okay, I just wanted to lay this out because it's something that you have to keep in mind if you're going to start your own company or anything like this, right? Yeah, unhealthier see that unhealthier cheaper substitutes 100% like canola or ooh 100% or ketchup has 2% tomato tomatoes and the rest is sugar. Yeah. Yeah. We, uh, we don't buy ketchup. I, I don't buy ketchup anymore. Uh it's been a long long time, right? Jonah Callis Waga on substitute. What is the meaning of the matrix for you? Please explain and is that so that we can program the matrix and um, bring these programs into reality in our lives. Please explain. Wait, greetings, Netherlands. Salutations, Netherlands. Uh, budget soya milk. Budget soya milk. All the God says. Uh, it could be motor oil. Motor oil. Uh, da, da, da. Regarding matrix, uh, in terms of what? There's a lot of people say we live in a matrix. We live in a what do you call a hologram. Um, but the matrix to me means uh, something that you can control to a certain degree that you can program as you said right uh, I personally don't think we're living a full-on matrix mr. brain freeze extra virgin olive oil only everything else is trash here's the thing with olive oil um, you, you're not supposed to use it in high heat, right? I think medium heat is okay. So what do you use for when you're cooking in high heat? See, the canola was used as a machine lubricant. Then someone said, hey, let's try cooking with it. Geniuses, right? Reduce the expense. Profits increase. Right? Synthberry. Humans today have five times the linolic lino acid in their bodies that our ancestors had because of, of seed and vegetable oils yeah that's one thing cliff high says don't use any seed oil whatsoever right no seed oils uh he i if i recall correctly he he says lard is good animal fat is good keanu are we doing you use butter uh you use butter on high heat okay i like butter merrick what happens if you cook olive oil on high heat? it changes its um structure i looked into this before but i didn't pay too much heat to it i just know you're not supposed to uh, heat up uh olive oil or extra virgin olive oil anyway so use butter and high heat yeah i still use olive oil for cooking uh, but I don't crank it up to high heat a uh, low to medium I'm not 100% sure, sure if that's okay or not uh, but it, it changes its molecular structure I believe where your body uh, doesn't absorb it the way uh, it does virgin unheated uh, especially cold press I believe is supposed to be good wow we'll certainly look into this thanks guys yeah Merrick look into it and if you know you know link it up on our gilded server right link on our guild server um so that's one thing i just wanted to just lay this out again because uh, whenever i talk about 
you know, financial uh, mathematics. And I do with students and stuff like this. This is something that I lay out right at the beginning. Um, just say, look, keep this in mind. Expenses, profits, usually in general, uh, expenses and revenue and profits, usually in general, once you get a company, you're the ball rolling for a company, the best way that you can increase your profit this gap between revenue and expenses is to reduce your expenses which is something that people do that's why a lot of stocks if you watch the stock market a lot of companies when they come up with news where they say they're laying off a whole bunch of people the stock goes up keep track of the stock market if you, if you haven't watch companies that announce layoffs those companies that announce layoffs there's a there's got to be a root cause for the layoffs but those companies that announce layoffs their stock usually goes up because what they just did, they reduced their expenses. So investors are like rock and roll, right? It all depends on the cause, of course, right? Um, Keanu, what is your take on mutual funds? Depends on the mutual fund. Depends on the mutual fund. Uh, personally, I've been telling people not to be really in the markets right now. Uh, stock markets anyway. There are certain stocks that are well worth investing in. Uh, there's a lot of stocks that are pure garbage. Uh, pump and dump. And they're riding on fluff or hype. Right? Um, and in general, the overall atmosphere for locking in, uh, it's unstable. Geopolitics is unstable. The supply chains can be cut. Right? And there's a lot of fanatics ruling over especially the western world so you can't trust them and they've introduced laws where they're allowed to ha do bail-ins where they could seize people's funds and assets that's including stocks right you might not be the owner of your stock if you have stocks mutual funds uh, okay you might not have those stocks okay it's just the way it works right you might be an unsecured uh, investor <laughs> if you have your stocks. The secured investors, if a company goes liquid, has to go uh, um, liquidate, the secured investors will get paid out and you won't. Right? Uh, Martin Armstrong talked a lot about this. Um, others as well. Uh, who else was I listening to? Um, uh, Paul uh, Paul Craig Roberts Paul Craig Roberts has covered this a lot recently uh, like he, he put out some three main articles and he had he's done a lot of interviews with it so look into it Paul Craig Roberts has talked about this Martin Armstrong has talked about this so it's quite interesting uh, controllers and so if you lay off Elder God you will make him make money <laughs> I don't think so I don't pay Elder God anything <laughs> Sorry, Elder God. <laughs> Elder God, I joined a union if I were you. <laughs> hilarious, hilarious. Uh, 